Security at the Colorado State Capitol is a big issue following last week's deadly insurrection in Washington, D.C. Colorado State lawmakers are considering major security upgrades worth $10 million. They're hoping to get taller fencing to surround the Capitol, more security cameras in and around the building, fortified doors, bulletproof windows, and even bollards around the building to prevent vehicles from crashing into it. The considerations first came up over the summer during George Floyd and Black Lives Matter protests. None of the changes have been formally approved so far. The lack of a security presence played a major role in the chaos in the Capitol last week, but it's not the first time security officials in Washington dealt with threats. Back in 1932, tens of thousands of veterans who fought in the First World War camped out outside the Capitol, demanding a bonus that was promised to them for fighting in the war. If paid out, veterans could have received up to $500 for their service. Dubbed the Bonus Army, the veterans camped out outside the Capitol for weeks, but were dispersed by military forces after an Army intelligence report claimed the encampment would have signaled communist uprisings in other major cities in the country if left alone. Army forces charged the, at the Bonus Army encampment using bayonets and tear gas to clear them out. In total, two people were killed, 55 veterans were injured, and 135 were arrested. 22 years later, Capitol Security was met with a terrorist attack inside the House chamber when Puerto Rican nationalists demanding the U.S. give the territory its independence broke into the House gallery and shot multiple members of Congress. Five representatives were shot, none of them were killed, but the nationalists were arrested, tried, and convicted in federal court for attempted murder and other charges. They were later pardoned by former President Jimmy Carter in 1978 and 79. Then, of course, there is the matter of state capitals, some of which also have been the scene of terror attacks over the years. In 1967, armed members of the Black Panther Party took over the state legislature in Sacramento, California, and made it as far as the back of the assembly chamber. The incident was part of a demonstration to draw attention to the, quote, racist California legislature, as it was considering gun regulation, a gun regulation bill to prevent carrying loaded weapons into an incorporated area. Activists were concerned it would make black people powerless against already oppressive police departments. While some of the members were arrested, none of them had their guns confiscated. That's according to the Sacramento Bee. Last year, armed protesters managed to break into state capitals in Kentucky and Michigan. On January 31st, armed protesters, some clad in black and body armor, entered the state capitol in Frankfort, Kentucky. They were members of the We Are Kentucky Gun Owners Group and demonstrating their right to bear arms in the wake of similar pro-Second Amendment rallies in other states, most notably in Virginia. None of the protesters got violent and no arrests were made, but it called the state security presence into question. On May 1st, shortly after Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer extended the state's stay-at-home order to stop the spread of the novel coronavirus, a group of armed protesters broke into the Capitol in Lansing, demanding and the restrictions be lifted immediately. The incident prompted the legislature to cancel its session, and it was in the middle of debating when the protesters broke in. Most of them weren't even wearing masks and were jammed into the halls of the legislature. Like the COVID-19 exposure threat that's beginning to affect lawmakers who had to bunker down on Capitol Hill, there was a similar threat to security guards at the time in Lansing. Since then, a state committee passed a ban on open carry at the Capitol, but it needs a full vote before it can become law.